Welcome back to another episode of Drinking Buddies. Trevor and Brandon here. We have today Oktoberfest episode. So for those who don't know what an Oktoberfest beer is, it is a uh, kind of like an amber lager, um, typically called a Marzen or a fre- uh, fest beer. Oktoberfest is actually the last weekend of September and beginning of October, but it's really chilly out today. We had some thunderstorms. We we're gonna do the seltzer episode. We thought, let's get an Oktoberfest episode in with Feeling the fall. Falling. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, open them up and celebrate the the changing of the seasons and welcome fall. So the Oktoberfest beers are lagers. So they ferment at a colder temperature uh, than most ales or than other ales. Today we're starting out with the lightest Oktoberfest that I could find. Oktoberfest True Fest beer by Griffin Claw. Uh, Griffin Claw in Birmingham, Michigan. This comes in at 5% alcohol. And we are going to try the first one. I don't know what to expect out of an Oktoberfest beer. Really? I have no idea. Hey, can you get a little bit down? Did you hit record? Yeah. Did you hit record? Is microphone on? Griffin Claw, Oktoberfest. Cheers. I mean, light body. Light bodied. It's light caramel flavor mm-hmm. and then a little tingly hot flavor. I don't get. I don't because Oktoberfest beers are actually known for um, a lot of things to look for are uh, toasty bread, uh, malt flavors, and then they do have um, a little bit higher of a hop present. And with it being a lager, the kind of bitterness of the hops kind of come through a little bit easier compared to an ale. I get the bread. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, like caramely, and then a bread flavor, so it kind of tastes toasty. Like yeah. A, like a yeah. A nice piece of toast. I, I don't get a I don't get a whole bunch of flavor out of it. It is it is very light. Yes. I hope it's the lightest one because this poured like some of the loggers did on our last episode. It doesn't have like the ambery color that you think with an Oktoberfest beer. Right. Yeah. Like it's just a little bit lighter than what I was expecting. Does it kind of have a skunky to it? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, because when I open it up, I can taste kind of a skunk. I almost thought like metallic y kind of. Okay, uh, yeah. Just kind of like an off flavor. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like it. It is way too light bodied for me. Um, I do get that biscuity, bready kind of toast, little toasted bread uh, mm-hmm. flavor. And I do feel the presence of hops. That's what I don't really taste it, but I feel it. Yeah. And you can tell, you can still taste that it's an Oktoberfest. Yeah. It's just a light version of it. So. Yep. It's a good transition beer. Yeah. Three, four. Three, four. Second beer, Oktoberfest by Oddside in Grand Haven, Michigan. This comes in at 5.6% alcohol, a deep gold copper color, full bodied lager with a rich multi flavor and notes of caramel. I think that's what we're looking for. That's what I'm hoping we find. See what you got outside. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's see. That's what I, I would imagine Oktoberfest looking like. Wow. I'm. I don't know what it is, but I just got intoxicated. Outside is Oktoberfest. Ot- Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. <laughs> more full-bodied. A lot more caramel malt. I f- feel like it's still lacking flavor. Like I feel like it should just be a bit more heavy, like it's, when you first take a drink. It's that like, clean metallic yes. lager flavor still does come through, yeah. It doesn't have much flavor. And then it kinda comes in, but like it's still not like super flavorful. Yeah. Well and I don't but, think, I don't think they're supposed to be. Yeah. I, I think it's still just supposed to be a really easy drinking, but just with a tiny little bit more. Because they're drinking they're drinking seven days straight for Oktoberfest. As to a member of us. <laughs> 365, baby. <laughs> no. And that should be weird. Why? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you can tell it does have a little bit more body to it. You can tell that it does have a little bit more caramel flavor yes. uh, compared to that like toasted biscuit flavor that the previous one had. And I actually, when I aerate it, I can taste a little alcohol at the end. Yeah. I actually don't get as much uh, hop flavor. Not as much hops? Yes. Or no. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's smoother. It's not as uh, hoppy and tingly as the as the previous one. Yeah. So I think this is just a little bit creamier than that one. Uh, less hop flavor and just a little bit more of like a little alcohol bite. But it still reminds me of fall. Yeah. For me, I guess I get almost like a unsweetened tea. Um, I can, I can kind of see it. And it might be because the uh, hops that they used. It might be like the variety of hops mm -hmm. that they used. And, you know, because you got your... Your resiny, your aromatic, and then you have your floral, and this might just be like a really herbally uh, strain of hops that they used. I mean, you can still kind of feel the pokes of the hops, you know. Yeah, this is what I feel like an Oktoberfest should uh, should be. And I mean, five and a half percent, five point six is really not that not that super high to where you get full off of it. I mean, still, I mean, five and a half percent. You can drink a few of them still, a sixer, oh, yeah. a night out. So three seven three area. Okay, and I, I'm gonna hit it with a four. All right. I'm going to hit it with a 4. 4-0 four oh and a 3-8. Third beer, breweries never let us down. Uh, Brewery Vivant's Cocktoberfest, Fest Laga, 5.8% in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Cocktober, because their image is a red rooster. A beer for celebration, for toasting at the end of summer, and to crop harvested and coming of fall. Beers to the end of summer. Dang right. For those that don't know, the reason that this beer is called Cocktoberfest is because the symbol of Brewery Levant is the rooster cock, um, their flagship IPA Big Red Cock as well. Um, I didn't even realize that until I was just reading it. Um, another funny little play on the title of the beer. Right. So, uh, Cocktoberfest. Mmm. Well, cock a doodle doo. Wow! That's good. Yeah. Son of a gun, that's good. Happy at the end. Oh yeah. Like just uh, in the tongue feel, not obviously not flavor again. I I get a little bit of some floral hop at the end, actually flavor wise. Yeah. Um, this is definitely the darkest beer that we've had so far on here. Um, it just been again, just like the lager episode. This is just creamy and smooth. Yeah. Well, I don't know what they're doing differently, but they know exactly what they're doing. Because I feel like it's like a like a caramely, more than uh, biscuity and toasty. Yeah. And I think that's where that creaminess is coming from too, um, because it does have more of a caramel flavor than a uh, that that lighter biscuit flavor. Um, so yeah, smooth caramel, crisp. Um, I feel a little bit of this like little English floral um, hop coming in at the end. Mm -hmm. And then I do get another little hint of alcohol. With oh, it being definitely. So, with it being so light-bodied and, what was it, 5.8%? I get that, like, right away, I feel like. Really? You can taste, I feel like you can taste the alcohol all the way through it. You're not wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cutting through the whole thing. That's funny. Right. Yeah. Like sword. <laughs> but it's not bad. It's not overwhelming, and it doesn't dry my no. mouth out necessarily. But, yeah, with, yeah. I think the hops dry it out more than the alcohol. I got the gas. <laughs> My belly hurt. <laughs> you got the gas. Ain't talking about that pie. Yeah. <laughs> quaint. I don't know why it changes. Quaint. Quaint. Using the sense. Quaint. Oh, this Airbnb is quaint. I this... see. That doesn't. I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it might be this low caramel malt. Mixed with the lager yeast that Trevor and I are both getting this metallic-y flavor from both of them, or from all of them. They're not, uh, it's not very overpowering or like make us, you know, kind of take a step back by any means, but it is present. And I, if anyone knows... It must if, be the copper. The, the copper colored malt. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows what that, uh, what that you know, uh, off flavor is. It might not even be an off flavor. It might just be a result of this style of beer, but uh, definitely reach out and let us know because we're, we're curious. Not, yes. I got to give this a 4-3 because honestly, I absolutely love this. I think I might be searching for too much flavor with them. You might be. <laughs> because I feel like, uh, like I've just been searching for the flavors on all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they are just lagers though. Right. I guess I gotta keep that in mind. I think I'm at a four one. Okay. I just I feel like it needs more. Yeah. 
It's tough. Can you hit me with the best one so far in a good quality brew? Hey, we'll do that. Here's that one. Fourth beer, Oktoberfest by Pigeon Hill in Muskegon, Michigan. 6% alcohol, perfect for filling Das Boot. Where's the boot? <laughs> I mean Das Boot. We left it upstairs. We talked about this. Director. What? We need Das Boot. Pigeon Hill, Muskegon Zone, 6% Oktoberfest. Wow. Hometown hero. I'm telling you. Linger. Oh, that flavor lingers. Oh, it just sticks around. Yeah, and that's all that toasty, biscuity bread. Still tasting it. It's like I just took a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Did I just set that glass down? <laughs> <laughs> that's stinking good. Dude. And it's not super heavy. It's still super light and crisp. It's still got that, like, tea aftertaste. I can see Which it. I'm not mad about. I no. like it. Yeah. But, I, and yeah, again, I think it's, yeah, it must be like the caramel hop mixture. Yeah. Yeah, because there is a certain style of hop that you want to use for these. Oh, I'm so sure. I, I wonder if that's kind of, you know, it's definitely not citrusy. It's definitely not super resiny, piney, dank. It's the, the floral. And it's that herby floral hop, um, just like a lot of British uh, beers will have that herby floral hop compared to the citrusy or the uh, the piney and resiny. Woo, I went off on a <laughs> <laughs> This has the caramel, toasty, biscuity, malty flavor that I'm hoping for. Still very slight hop uh, presence in there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like two-fifths. No alcohol flavor with it being higher, the highest beer so far. Finishes clean, but somehow is drinkable. Toasty, roasty, caramely malt. I mean, that's all you're getting. Yeah. And you kind of get a few tingles. I mean, all, all yeah. the other ones were tingly. This one's just kind of like pop, pop, pop. You know, just a little bit of tingle in there. Totally agree with that. I'm surprised I haven't had it yet. I can't believe I haven't had it yet. Right. Now I'm a little upset. Right. <laughs> how come how come you didn't tell me that Oktoberfest was so good? <laughs> he probably he probably be mad. He didn't know Oktoberfest was that good. How come you didn't tell me this Oktoberfest is good, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> the best malt flavor that I've had out of an Oktoberfest. So I I gotta hit this with like a four or six. Ooh, for an Oktoberfest? I like it, and I will match you with that. Really? Yeah. I'm happy about that. I like this. This a is lot. quality. 4.6? 4.6. I'm getting buzzed. Yeah? Are you too? A little bit. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe I'm not the guy I was. And I'm not the hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth and... Er, take two. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth and luckily final beer, Oktoberfest by Founders in Grand Rapids, Michigan, German style Marzen. This comes in at 6% alcohol. Eight. No, it was. Unit pick. Okay. Okay. Okay, Victoria. Anyways. Anyways, Founders Oktoberfest. Last one. <laughs> Founders Oktoberfest. Almost nothing but the metallic lager flavor. Yeah, it's like a, a very light body it compared almost, for the color. Right, for the color, you would assume that it would be kind of caramely and like toasty, but it's all this super light biscuit and then that metallic y uh, kind of slight skunk lager flavor. Impressed? Really? Not impressed. No, surprisingly not impressed. Look at the logo on the can. That right. screams Oktoberfest. Right. Beautiful can. I mean, design. Yeah. Simple, but elegant. Yes. Elegance. Quaint. Uh, with it being 6% alcohol, it's not a, a big body. I don't get a lot of alcohol bite, which isn't a bad thing, but no. uh, just kind of surprising. And yeah, I get no caramel flavor, no big malt flavor. It's just that um, that really fuzzy, fluffy dough and uh, lager yeast. The nose is a caramel scent, but absolutely no caramel flavor. 
Right now, I'm at like a 3-4. A 3-4? A 3-4. My arms are crossed, if that says anything. 3-4? <laughs> 3-4. Unfortunately. We don't have to check it, but... Octoberfest by Founders. Really yeasty. Really, like, underdone dough flavor. No hop, no alcohol, which is nice, but just not that quality, rich caramel flavor that I was looking for. Um, Octoberfest by Griffin Claw way too light. It could have used a little bit more caramel ball to it. Um, maybe a little bit more, you know, caramel 40, uh, crystal 60, you know, somewhere around there just to add that kind of extra, you know, color, a little bit more flavor. It was too light, but the flavor was not bad. Oddsides Oktoberfest, that's funny to say, it had a good amount of flavor to it. Still, still lacked a little something. Uh, Cocktoberfest by Brewery Vavon. It was smooth, creamy, caramely, um, some hot presence at the end, and a good amount of alcohol all the way through. Pigeon Hills Oktoberfest. I'm not saying that because I live in Muskegon. I am telling you right now that is the top Oktoberfest that we had today. Uh, toasty, uh, like toasty biscuit flavor, a little bit of hot presence at the end. No alcohol flavor, which is nice for a 6%, the highest alcohol one. And the flavor lingered. I mean, you didn't want to sit and chug it like you could with some of the others. Um, great flavor. It stayed for a while, but it was still clean enough to where you wanted to drink, uh, you know, for a long time. I absolutely loved it, and hands down the winner. Really? I'm really going to leave it. Oh, man. And I'm going to tell you what. Okay. The Founders Oktoberfest, it wasn't it didn't leave you wanting more of the flavor that was there. To where the Griffin Claw was still a lack of flavor. However, it was you wish that there was more flavor. The odd side, it was good. Like like Brandon said, right in the middle. Brewery Vivant or the creamiest out of all of them. Mm -hmm. and, and that I liked. Pigeon Hill, that was great. drink to that there's such a variety of everybody's take on what is what right yeah and that is that's always cool to see this was a style of beer that we had no prior knowledge on uh, until today happy Oktoberfest. today's episode welcomes uh fall so does that mean we're getting into stout season is stout season coming up thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time